Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about dialogues and more specifically the concept of class inheritance and how it works with dialogues in Arma 3. This video is mostly containing the theory behind making dialogues and a specific example will be shown and examined in the next video, so if you want some code head over there please. This video should explain what is happening in the code and give you a better idea of how to write your own dialogues with ease. Alright, so I'm going to start from the very start and try to explain you just very briefly what the class inheritance is. It's a term most often used with object oriented programming where it plays a big role in organizing the program and marking relations between individual abstractions as well as using those relations to write some functional code. Well, luckily, we don't need to care about most of the problems related to it because in Arma world, and especially with dialogues, it actually represents something a little bit different and much more simple. We'll be only using one concept in the inheritance, but still we will need to introduce a few basic names. When we inherit something from a class, it means that the characteristics of that class are passed to the other class that inherits the data. Let's call this class a child class and the one we take the data from a parent class. By passing all the data to the child class, we can save ourselves some time and create multiple controls of the same type in a very short time. So if you have watched the first video on dialogues, we made two controls, RSC text and RSC button. Now we will expand this code by modifying those two classes into parent classes and then we'll make a dialog with several child classes that inherit configuration of their parents. Before we do that though, let me show you how this thing works on a more simple example. We have a class called parent. It has a couple of basic attributes, some x and y coordinates, width and height and color. This class will be our parent class. And what I usually do is to define as many attributes as possible here and set them to default values. So in this case, we'll make the x equal to 50, y as well, width and height will both be 20 and color will be blue. Now we know that this class, when represented, will always be on these coordinates with height and width of 20 and it will be blue. A child class automatically inherits all of these settings, meaning that without any further changes, every child of this parent will also appear on 50-50 chords, will be 20 units wide and high and will be blue. However, these attributes can now be understood as default settings. These will be applied if we don't do anything about it, but as we all know from real life, a child can resemble its parent, but he or she can choose a different path in life than their parents and become a different person. And the same logic applies here, if we change any of the attributes of the child, it will overwrite the settings inherited from its parent class for that particular child class. So by adding color equals to red in the child class, we now have all the other attributes inherited from the parent, chords are still 50-50, width and height are both 20, but the color of the child class has now changed to red. The second child class can become green and move to the chords 60-20. Another child class can be twice as high as others and a fourth child can precisely copy its parent class. We can also make a grandchild class and make it inherit data from one of the child classes. A child class automatically takes all the settings from the parent and the grandchild automatically takes settings from the child, but those can be overwritten as well by doing exactly the same thing. This concept is pretty simple once you get used to it and it makes dialogue creation both faster and much more understandable. It allows you to have a much cleaner code which is easier to read for everyone around you as well. But maybe one of the biggest advantages, and I hope you'll be glad to hear this, it allows you to prepare some basic class definitions and use them as a base for all your future dialogues you may want to make. The base class never needs to change once you have it. You can just copy paste it into all your missions and then create child classes, overwriting only small details, which effectively makes the code even simpler and easier to read. Let's get back to our example. We will extend the one text one button combo to four different text fields and two buttons. 
However, we will use the knowledge of inheritance in dialogues and instead of making four whole text fields with all definitions, we will only make one and then make dialogue with four child classes where each child will specify its unique attributes as necessary. The same can be done with buttons. We will first say just in general what a button is and then in the dialogue itself we just make two child classes of this general button and we will specify where they need to be placed, what color they should be and what should happen after clicking on each one of them. Can you see how simple the whole process is? We can now create an unlimited amount of similar dialogue controls with only a few lines and without worrying too much about messing up some definition we don't even need to use. This approach bears one advantage that I think some of you will welcome. But I'll talk about that in the code related video where I'll be actually working with the actual dialogues and I'll show you how this theory works in the game itself. Before we go, let me say again that this is not the same as object oriented class inheritance. For those of you who know this principle outside of Arma, you are surely aware of the characteristics and dangers of inheriting from classes, but here it means much simpler process. By making a parent class, we are pretty much only making its attributes the new standard value, the new default for the child classes. I usually define as much as I can in a parent class and make it some sort of an abstract definition that is never used in the actual dialogues. That means that whichever attribute I need to change for a child, I'm certain that all the rest of them are defined and set to some value and the code will definitely work in some way. Plus it allows me to have one unified template for all dialogues and whenever I need I can just copy the parts I need and quickly make a simple dialogue in just a few minutes. Well I hope you have at least some sort of an idea about this whole thing. I recommend you to watch the next video where I actually take the code we worked with earlier, modify the dialogue into the form I described here with different classes and show you how hugely advantageous this approach really is.